Jonathan, you have a new piece in Politico entitled, Why Hasn't Biden Called Chris Christie? In which you write about a possible Christie independent run and Republicans who tell you Biden is not reaching out to them. Okay, right. so um, tell us what you think Chris Christie could sure. do for the Biden campaign. Well, it's bigger than just Chris Christie. It's really every single anti-Trump figure in the GOP has not heard from President Biden, which I find to be remarkable, given that Biden's going to need a coalition similar to what he had, Mika, in 2020. Like who? which Beyond Chris which Christie? Sure. Mitt Romney, Susan Collins, yeah. Lisa Murkowski, Todd Young, Bill Cassidy are the mm -hmm. senators. Um, people like Mark Esper, figures from the Trump right. administration. Look, he, he's going to need every oar in the water from Liz Cheney to AOC. That's the breadth of the mm -hmm. coalition to defeat Trump. And you got to have that center right flank with you. You don't have to roll them out now. It's only March or now it's April. But you do have to start lining these folks up. And I I can't understand for the life of me why Joe Biden, of all people, does not recognize that these folks need a personal touch, that you got to start laying the ground to get them out. Not all of them are going to endorse Biden. Of course, some of them will never endorse Biden, but they will go after Trump or they'll at least stay quiet. But it's incumbent on Biden if he really does think this is a different sort of election that's not just left versus right, but the democracy is at stake. It's incumbent on Biden to start reaching out to these folks now. So it's. I just want to go to Donnie for a second um, on, and then back to Jay Mart on this. But Donnie, it's just. <laughs> I understand that all hands on deck for the Biden campaign. I do, and and Jay Mart makes a really great point. But can we sit with this on the day after Easter for one more second? I think you'd be a good person to help me out here, because it's the people who. You know celebrate the presence of God in their lives. But, and, and I understand what Chris Matthews was saying about um, the income levels of Trump supporters of the base, and many of them being very poor. And if you look at history, especially the history of Europe, there's a lot of very frightening parallels to be made there. But I, I'm now talking about the people who go to Mar-a-Lago on a Saturday night and then church on a Sunday morning. Yeah. And I, I, I can't understand the donors on the on the list that they put out, Ricketts, Wynn, whatever. They accept God in their lives and they follow the, the messages, the parable of the Good Samaritan. And yet they follow this man who delivers a daily dose of cruelty and raw politics and self-love to the table. Explain yeah. it to me. Uh Chris's He's, explanation you know of why. You know some of these people. Yeah, I, and they make me sick, actually. And Chris's explanation of why poor people, uneducated people, look, you say to them, everything sucks, I'm going to blow it up, they're buying it. I mean, mm -hmm. it's a very simple, primal message. The people that I can't get through, and I understand, I know a lot of them, that make me sick are the people that this country has been good to. And yet here's a guy that's saying, I'm going to change everything. If you, you, you're not going to have the right to vote anymore. You're not going to have the right to watch the TV station you want to. I'm going to have the Insurrection Act. I'm going to have the military turn on you if I want them to. Everything that we're built on, every teat that they have kind of been taken advantage of, it makes me sick, and I don't understand these people. Is it purely that, you know what, this country, I like because this country has been traditionally white. I don't like what's happening to this country. Is it that... Mm -hmm. um, they're, they, they, they just are so, so insular, and they, I, I don't, they make me sick, the people with money in this country. Any billionaire that's voting for Donald Trump, do you need a tax break that badly? Has this country not been great to you, and you want to blow it up? You don't worry about your grandchildren being able to vote? Shame on you, anybody. I understand the people that Chris is talking about. I understand the primal instinct that I want everything to change. But this country's been good to you, and you listen to this demonic figure, this fascist figure, talk about how he's going to blow everything up? Shame on you. So, J. Mart, let's talk about that messaging. Um, you, you and your smart piece note that the Biden camp hasn't reached out to these Republicans. But what about right. these voters, the voters that we've been talking about around this table right yeah. here? W is that messaging coming? Do they think it can work? Uh, look, I think that Biden can work 
at the margins, working class voters. I think he obviously has got a challenge uh, trying to keep working class black and Hispanic men in, in the coalition. You're going to hear a lot more about that. That's going to be a serious challenge. But if we're being totally honest, he's not going to reverse the years long trends among working class white voters in this country. And instead, he's got to take advantage of what could be called the, the Nikki Haley coalition. Look at last week in Arizona. The primary's been over for a month, all right? 22% of Republican voters last week in the biggest county of Arizona around Phoenix didn't vote for Donald Trump for president, 22%. The primary's been over for a while. Those are the kind of voters that Biden needs to get back. He had a lot of them in 20, and he can't afford them to stay home or go to Trump this time. I just think if you're talking about you know working class white voters, you can try to keep what you had at 20, but it's not going to get better. It's probably going to get worse, but you can compensate for that by trying to get more center-right voters who can't stomach Trump but have a reluctance to get behind Biden. But they're still in play, and I think six months of Trump saying crazy stuff is going to be the entree, but it's important to have validators. you got to have people who are saying that it, it, yeah, it's, a, it's okay, Republican voter in Scottsdale, or Buckhead, all right, to vote for Joe Biden. And that, that's people like Paul Ryan, like Chris Christie, Liz Cheney, right. Mitt Romney, and maybe even George W. Bush, who's been awfully quiet for a long time now. Right. I was wondering, uh, I was wondering about him. Uh, senior political columnist for Politico, Jonathan Martin, thank you very much. And hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2020 24 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.